Good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Can you see my screen? Can someone please confirm? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm still waiting for others to join. Now, uh, mean, meanwhile, what we are going to cover today, I'll quickly let you know. Today, we are going to see some options in file share. We, we are yet to do that, how to access file share. So we are going to do that, file share. Uh, we'll, we are going to see some options under blob, under storage, we have blob. So whatever options do we have, whatever options we have in blob, we are going to see that. Uh, as your paired region, I think I have already shared it with you, but I'll quickly just, that's very small, just one liner explanation I have to give. And then we'll talk about backup. So these are the three topics which we are going to cover today. Then tomorrow we don't have any class, guys. It is uh, for you guys to revision uh, and practice all the topics, self-study, whatever we have done. Do the practicals, do the questions, whatever you want. I may not be available. Uh, I, I am in international roaming next week, so I will I will not be available uh, over the phone, but you can still drop a message uh, on WhatsApp. And if there is uh, some urgent work or anything, or you're stuck, you are not getting any help, feel free to call me, then I, I will answer the call, right? Then next Saturday, guys, 25th of November, let me open the calendar. I'm not sure if you can see it, it's on my first screen. So next Saturday, 25th of uh, November, Again, we do not have classes. Right? So from tomorrow to next Saturday, <coughs> sorry, it's next Saturday, you have enough time to practice and do the revision. And then on 26th of November, Sunday, next Sunday, we will have the session. There we will discuss all the doubts which you have in these two weeks where you practice, you pre prepare the interview questions, etc. All the doubts, question and answers and small miscellaneous topics with like uh, identity management or maybe... Uh, uh, key vault these are basic uh, very uh, important but very very small topics won't take more than 15 minutes so we'll cover all those miscellaneous topics after that again for a week you will have option for revision and once you are done with these two weeks and next week everything is done and from 2nd of december which is a saturday we'll have our classes on regular basis uh 2nd of december 3rd of december there we are going to start azure site recovery disaster recovery and migration. Why did I club these topics? Because when we use uh, Azure migration, Azure migration, it's very new concept. When I say very new, it's uh, three, four years, I guess. Uh, but at the back end, it is using ASR, Azure Site Recovery. Hence, I want to club those topics so your understanding will be better. So we are going to learn first from 2nd of December, we are going to learn Azure Site Recovery, Disaster Recovery, and based on that, your understanding will be built and then I'll teach you migration. And then it will take uh, maybe uh, two, two weeks for theory part and uh, practical everything for migration to complete. So by mid of December, we are going to complete our portion and then we are going to start resume building session. Uh, then I'll uh, divide you guys uh, in, in five or four chunks based on your experience, what kind of level of experience, number of years of experience, your technical understanding, et cetera. And then we'll do the uh, knock portal job uh, portal, how to prepare the port, uh, your profile on job portal, how to prepare your resume, how to apply for job, uh, what are the keywords you have to use, all those things. Once we are done, then I will start mock calls on individual basis. If the candidate is ready for the mock call, I'll arrange a mock call. And if candidate is comfortable uh, for others to allow, for example, let's say I'm arranging a mock call for Nirmal for first time. And if she's comfortable, so I'll send the invite to all of you. You can be silent uh, spectator for the interview. There will be a panel. There will be an interviewer. And these these are uh, from my previous batch. And these are my uh, maybe ex-colleagues or people. But they, they do take interview real time. I'm not just bringing any person. I'll bring person. I'll request them only to them who are taking interviews, who are conducting interviews. So you'll have the real time feeling. That how do they ask? What are the questions they have in their mind? Okay. Uh, and I would suggest to be a video ready for those calls. Unless I leave it up to you, that's not a compulsion. But that's my suggestion. It gives you a boost, a good confidence when you practice twice or thrice more calls on a video uh, with, uh, with with an actual panel who, who take interviews, who conduct interviews on a daily basis. It helps a lot. Right? The, all these are my suggestions. Okay, once I'm done with migration, I'm done with classes. 
rest is it's my extra efforts i'm putting for you guys and it is up to you you want to join you can join if you want to quit skip it's, it's up to you i'm ar arranging mock calls if anyone is not comfortable joining the mock call feel free to skip it but it is for your own good when when you conduct when you attempt the mock calls you will learn a lot how to speak what to speak uh, eye contact etc and it it will give you a, a little bit of idea also that how can you read some things from screen without letting your interviewer know so all we all these things we can practice in our mock interviews and only if person is ready then i will send the invite to others and others can be spectator if the candidate is not comfortable says that uh, no i want to just try one by one then i won't share it with others then we'll just do it on i i would suggest you to let other also see because they will also learn and it will give you more confidence now that you are speaking in front of 10 people it will be easier for you to speak in front of one is it clear to everyone yeah very clear yes so i'm still waiting for others to join i see only 13 people uh do you guys have any questions any doubts i see some of you have completed the task uh, and i feel it's not that difficult uh, but still do you guys have any doubts or any questions on whatever we have been doing till now on storage do we have mustakim uh, here yes, i have a question uh, yes sir i'll take your question a minute yes mustakim raised a question okay. on whatsapp I asked you guys if you understood or not. Nirmal said yes. Uh, I think Anisa said she did not understand. So I explained. I hope others, you understood it well because you guys did not reply. So I'm assuming you guys understood it well. That was a good question. Sometimes they may ask you in your interview. The question was, he was asking that who all can create a generate a SAS key. For example, let me open the portal. Let's say if this is my uh, storage account. Right. If this is my storage account, then the question is, who all can uh, generate a SAS key? This shared access signature. Can a reader do it? Can a contributor do it? Or can only owner do it? Who all can do it? So he has already answered that question. If you people have missed it, go back and check the chats. He has mentioned that there are, there are three or four roles. Ob owner obviously can do anything. Right. A or a contributor can do it. But there are two or three... I think four more roles are there. It's there in the group. So that was a good question. If you guys did not understand, I just explained it to, for you. Uh, yes, Ashar, what's your question? Uh, you're on mute, Ashar, if you're speaking. Guys, can you hear me? Can someone confirm? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, so yes. no, no problem. I think there's some uh, issue with his mic. Okay, so let's proceed, so, guys. Uh, yes. Actually, the answer shared by Mustakim mm -hmm. is a uh, contributor, storage account contributor, storage blob data contributor. I got these uh, four uh, data owner, mm -hmm. but last two storage blob data reader and storage blob delegator. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, understand. That's that. okay. You don't have, it, you don't even have to read all of them. See, when interviewer is asking you to be very honest, even if I am asking, I, it's it's not expected from you to remember all those roles. The okay. question why I'm portraying here, or any interviewer will do that, to check your understanding if you have that understanding or not. Well, what role did you say, by the way? Which you're not storage getting? blob data reader, storage blob delegator. Storage blob data reader. Can you see it here? No, which one you are not able to see? Are these the one you are not able to see? Data reader and delegator? Yeah, I yeah, got it. Oh. Okay. So even if it is not there, that's completely fine. No one is expecting you to remember everything. It is just that they, they want to see your understanding. That Are you even getting the question? When I'm asking that which RBAC role can generate the SAS, the motto here is to check whether you are understanding or not, whether you are able to grasp the question. Yeah, is ko aap access key se jor ke kuch bhi dummy answer bana rahe ho, ya aise random koi keywords, jargons ye kar rahe ho. If you're doing that, then you'll be marked down. 
But if you understand the question and even if you don't know these exact roles, because even Mustaqim did not know, he had to search, right? And any person, any architect or any manager would be happy as far as you do my work, even uh, after doing Google, even if after Googling it, if you're able to do it, I'm happy with that. No one is expecting you to remember all those things. But what is expectation kya hai? to have the understanding? So you can clearly say that definitely all the privileged roles, they can generate the SAS key. Privileged roles are uh, owner, contributor, right? They can generate it. And apart from them, there are some roles which maybe I don't remember as of now. But if I go there and search, I will find them and I can read it in description that which role can do what. So if you have this level of understanding and if you give this answer, it will be uh, good enough. Now, because Mr. Kim has shared the article, now you know this, these two roles, right? Now, suddenly, if I ask you some other service and some uh, other level of access, will you even know whether that which, which, which roles are meant for what? But no one knows that. So you, you don't even have to remember them. Don't worry. But what is expected from you guys, it's to have the understanding of this that, okay, you can come here, you can read the description and then you can decide the role. So as far as you have this understanding, you are good to go. Clear to everyone? Got it. Okay. So let's quickly start with file share. Did anyone try, by the way, file share? Yes, I tried. And did it work? It's working for me. What about others? Yes. Did anyone else try? Okay, that's okay. If you guys do not try, let's quickly go ahead and do that. So if, to create a file share will definitely require a storage account. So I can either create a storage account or I can use an existing one. So I'm using my existing storage account. Okay, do I have any file share? I think that you have put one file over there. Test. No, do yes, I have any file test. share? Question is not about whether, whether I have it, some data in this. Do I have any file share? Yes, I do have. This is the file share. What is the size of this file share? 5 TB. 5 TB. Let's edit this. What is the maximum I can have? ITP is maximum. Okay, what if I have 150 TB? Yes, yes. What if I have 150 TB? You can custom it. Okay, if I go here, go to properties, edit quota. I I already clicked on set to max. So let's say I am trying to put some extra zero. It is not taking it. Why? Let's try to lower it down. It's working. Uh, 512 GB. Okay. Now again. Let's see. I want 50 TB. What does it say? Size must be between 1 and 5 and 2, 0 GBs. Yes, which means 5 TB. Right? But again, my question is, is there any scope? Can I get more than 5 TB? 5 TB looks very good as of now. But when it goes to actual production servers, sometimes, it, it, though 5 TB, it's a good amount. But sometimes when we have huge database, SQL, Oracle, etc., 5 TB is also less. So do I have any scope that I can go beyond 5 TB? Yes, How? Uh, enable a uh, large file like while creating storage account. While creating the storage account, enable uh, the large will, file. Yeah, hundred TB. Okay. Any any other condition? With that, or can uh, I yeah. enable any any file? Can I do that for any any storage account? No, no, no. Sorry. What is any any other condition? Do we have? Uh, it should be an LRS. Uh, in the, in the yes. 
Yeah, it it cannot be in GRS. In LRS only. Yes. I hope others are getting it. While creating the account, if I select GRS or ZRS or GZRS, I'm not getting that option. But if I select LRS, I will get an option which talks about the large enable large file. Let me see where is it. Here it is. Can you see this option, guys? Enable large file share. Yeah. Okay. If I go back instead of LRS, if I select GRS, look at this. This is disabled. Anything I select other than GR, uh, LRS, that is disabled. So if I, I'll have to select LRS and I'll have to select enable large file share. And look at this. Provide the file share support to maximum of 100 TB. If I do this, and now if I create one uh, storage account or one file share in this one, that will be of 100 TB. That can be of 100 TB. Got it? Yes. Is this clear to everyone? Any doubt, any questions? So Guys, while creating it? the storage, hmm. so while creating the storage account, uh, hmm. while deploying at that time only we have to select LRS, right? right. Uh, Post that we do not get any option to uh, uh, to change the. You don't. You you don't get an option. Did you see? Did you guys check? Can we not change it? Are you asking a question or are you letting us know? No, no, no. I'm asking a question that what about others? Yes, guys. Okay, let, let others answer. Let's see if they, they were attentive. I have already shown it in last session. Yes, guys. Can we change it or can we not change it? Anyone would like to try? Yes, we can change it. We can From change where? configuration. Okay. Configuration. But the question here is that I was in GRS. Can I go to LRS? Right? That is the question. Correct. From where can I go it? From where can I do it? Uh, from redundancy. Uh, from redundancy. Sorry. Yeah, where redundancy is it? Can, can you guys, not... Nirmal, can you see it? Oh, uh, no. Is this the one you are talking about? Whoever answered? Yeah, right. Yes, well, yes, sir. Okay, so if I click on redundancy, what is it now? LRS. 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 So I can select GRS. I can select RAGRS. And I can select ZRS. Simple. Got it? So you can do it. Once it is there, you can yeah. change it. It's just give me one minute. Sorry. So is it clear, guys, to everyone? Okay. Now, let's say it was in GRS. Yeah. I changed it to LRS. Can I change? How will I enable the uh, large file? Because while creating, I created in GRS. Okay. Now, I changed it to LRS. Fine. But what about large file? Is it already enabled? Is it disabled? Where will I check that? Disabled. So where can I check it? In configuration. Okay, where is it? Uh, in the last button, yes. Here it is. But what does it say? That this setting cannot be changed after it has been enabled. Okay, so if it was disabled, you can enable it. But once you enable, you can cannot go back. Apply the same logic. You cannot reduce it. You can increase it. If it was disabled, you can enable it, but if it is enabled once, you cannot disable it. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. 
okay let's see if now if i go to grs what will happen to that okay look at this it can't even go to grs why because our large file is enabled so this could be used as an interview question or maybe a scenario where you can explain something to your interviewer okay so you can change it definitely but you cannot change it when your large file is enabled got it guys if i go to some other storage account let's say this one and if i as you guys will have to you know go through all these options and check one by one at least what is where i mean not all of them but whichever we have discussed so you will remember it otherwise in your interview you will be uh, you know look at this this is disabled i can enable it okay but once it is enabled i cannot disable it and once this is disabled i can obviously change anything from lrs to i can go to grs from grs i can go back to lrs and while we are here okay now the moment i did grs what happened it selected primary and secondary region i hope all of you remember what is grs right i don't have to explain it now yes right i, I hope you remember all these options grs lrs whatever we discussed let me scroll it up yes guys yes no maybe what about others do you guys remember these options lrs grs so look at this yes, this sir. is the primary this is secondary region this is what that, that's what is happening here but did I get an option to select the secondary region? When I just enabled GRS, did you see me selecting a West US? Did I select it or it came automatically? No, it came automatically. So from where did it come and why West US? And how do I know that which one is it is going to take next? Maybe because of uh, paid region. So yes, automatically... bingo. That is your paired region. I, I still said that we have to discuss that is your paired region. So where can you see paired region? Here I've just given the example. Do not ever, this kind of data do not ever refer to my notebook, to one note. Because this is a, a screenshot, an outdated one. Maybe they have made some changes here. Maybe they have increased the list. Maybe they have decreased the list. They have removed something. Right? But this is how it is. This is just for example, and I'll, well, we'll see how, where can we see the live data. So if I create a, a storage account in Canada Central, and if I enable GRS, the where will be the second region? Canada East. Canada East. If I create in China North, China East, Central India, South India. I do not have any option or say in this that, okay, with East US, I do not want West US. I want East US too. No, you cannot say that. You do not have that option, right? And where to check that list? It will be there somewhere on Azure's website. Let's see. And these regions, normally, they are with low latency. They are 300 miles away from each other. Why this 300? They must... Um, they must have done some study. Look at this, 300 miles away from each other. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of study they did. We don't even have to know about it. They must have done some study and they have come to this conclusion that if there is some earthquake or flood or anything in one city, one region, so it impacts approximately 250 miles. So 300 miles, it's what they are targeting. That our next region should be any region which is 300 miles away from the primary region. So if any disaster is happening here, that should not impact here. Clear, guys? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. Uh, I think, yes, here it is. Azure regional pairs. So if I create something in East Asia, uh, the regional pair is Southeast Asia, Singapore. Australia East, Australia Southeast. Australia Central, Australia Central 2. We have a long list here. We, we will always refer to this list. We are never going to look at the uh, screenshot for this kind of data. Now look at this. Central India, it says South India and West India. Maybe they are making some changes here or here. So sometimes you may see West India or we can create one uh, storage account in Central India and uh, check the real-time data that where it, where does it take you to. 
is it going to south india or is it going to west india and if you create a west india it's not always central india is tarah se bhi nahi hai ki central india ka south hai to south ka hamesha central hoga look at this central india's uh, this one is west india and west india's uh, paired region is south india right so don't create your own own uh, uh, thought process and your own equations that okay iska hoga to ek yaad kar leta you don't even have to remember this data again no one is expecting you to remember you need to understand the concept and you can be very blunt about it when when it comes to interview if they ask you about pair region you don't have to mug up the pair region you have to understand the concept of pair region and you can clearly say that okay we can go to microsoft's website and there is a cross region replication table given i will always refer to that even if you remember it it's a best practice that you go ahead and refer so you can be, being an architect if you are giving some diagram or some design you cannot say uh, that okay central india will go to west india how do you know i i just remember it i have been working from 10 years trust me no that that's not the answer you can give you'll have to uh, attach this link that whatever i have mentioned whatever i have uh, designed for you whatever i am uh, designing for you a solution that is based on this information the source of that information is azure or microsoft's article this is how you'll have to give so you don't even have to remember them but is this clear now what is paired region yeah yeah everyone guys anyone has any doubt so we 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 said when we are going to see paired region we have covered that file share access i'll just show it to you now and then blob option and then we'll go to backup okay so this is paired region now let's go to file share file share i have already shown you how to create a 100 tb file share right if you want to create a 100 tb file share how to do that again no one is asking you or they are not going to give you a computer to create one but they need to know whether you understand these concepts whether you know these concepts pata bhi hai ya nahi aapko ye concepts right so they need to know all this information so we created this storage account with lrs and uh, in a, we enabled the file share, 100 tb file share so let's try creating one it's already there so you do, you don't even have to create can you see 100 tb 100 tb and this one it's it is taking maximum of 5 tb it is not going beyond that so now let's quickly go ahead and see how can you access that so if i have a file share where is the file share uh, I think it was in this storage account. Let's see. So if I have this file share, five hundred and twelve GB, and let's say that I have some document in this one, and I want you guys to access this and upload some document, download something, edit something, do whatever, whatever job you have been assigned to do it, right? So let's say if I upload something. Okay. this has been uploaded now i want you guys to download the file with you or maybe access this or edit something i'm working on a project okay i upload it here simply i'll ask you which operating system are you using if you're using linux there is a script you will give the script they will run it in their linux uh, operating system and they will have a mount drive available people who are from linux they will understand it people who are using mac same the script they will run this script in their terminal and they will have a drive mounted to their mac mostly we are using mac uh, windows so let's go ahead and select windows if you guys do not want to do it do not definitely do not do it on your uh, on on this pc on your office pc okay do not try it on your office pc guys please because this will disable a few things and it it will make some changes so do not try it you won't even come to know and you will uh, break few policies of your office so don't uh, don't even do that in on your office laptop try to do it in uh, on your personal laptop if you do not have one if it is not working or something it's simple that you create uh, a, a virtual machine on azure and try it on your virtual machine is it clear yes guys is it clear to everyone 
No. How on a virtual machine? Sorry. Yeah, how how that I'm that part I'm sh showing it to you. Be, be it virtual machine, be it your personal laptop or anything, it's the same thing. How that I'm going to show. But is it clear to everyone? Do not try it on your office laptop. Okay. I do not want any one of you to get into any trouble. Right? Do not try this at least this step because that, that's a script. You don't even know what is it doing behind the scene, and you won't even come to know that you have uh, broken some policies. So. When it comes to Windows, you will ask your client which operating system you're using. Let's assume Windows. Okay, then you're going to ask which drive do you want. Now, let me explain you the drive. I'll go to a virtual machine. Even I don't want to do it on my personal laptop. Because sometimes then it will slow your laptop. And the network share is there, network connectivity, network drive is there. It, it uh, slows your laptop. So I'm not doing that on my laptop. Even I'm doing it on my owner. Uh, this one virtual machine so this is a virtual machine which i'm using okay. so when i'm asking which drive do you want this is what i mean if i open this machine and look at this so how many drives do i have here two c and d two drive c and d so can i ask my uh, azure administrator that okay give me d drive will that work what do you think a D drive, right? Yes. Will the D drive work? D. If I take this as a D drive, will it work? So, yeah, D option is D drive option is there, right? So we can ask, ask the administrator to give no, the definitely access on it won't work. D. Simply, it won't work. Okay. You already have D drive, guys. What am I doing with that script that I am attaching that drive here? I'm attaching that drive here as a network drive. Last time I shown you guys that my Google Drive is attached to my laptop as a G Drive. If you guys remember that. Look at this. This is my personal drive C, D, E, F. And this Google Drive, I have attached it as G Drive. When I already have F Drive and E Drive, it wasn't possible for me to use G uh, these drives again. This can be used only once. So here I cannot take C Drive or D Drive. I can ask them, uh, give me any other drive other than this. Let's say I'm saying uh, it's a network share, so give me N drive, okay, N as in November. So what you will do as an administrator, you will select N here, because they said N, okay. storage account key, and click on show script. Once you have this script with you, you simply copy the script, and you give it to your user, nothing else, no user ID, no password, nothing. You give this to your user. And your user will open PowerShell and run this script. Simple. It is as simple as that. Here I'm going to hit enter. Now look at what does it say that credential added successfully. N drive used 0 GB, free 512 GB. This is the root. And then I should see a drive here. Look at this. Can you guys see? Yeah. It says test is the name. Why this test name? It is given. I have given it there. And what is the drive? Look, look at this information. The one which you see below when I hover over the mouse. You will see end drive written at the end. Yeah. So this is how. If, yeah. if I already have end drive. Now if I run the script for some other drive using n it will clash it won't work if i run this same script if i change it here and if i make it d drive okay and if i change the script and now if i copy it won't work it will throw some sort of error why because i already have that drive there is no scope that you can assign the same drive on two same letter to two drives is it clear guys to everyone if you're not getting it, let me Understood. show it to you. People who are using their personal laptop, you can try it. I've shared the screen. Uh, I've shared the script with you guys. Just open PowerShell. I'm putting Z drive uh, or maybe Y drive. Mostly no one will have Y drive. So I'm putting Y drive and giving it to you. Just open your PowerShell. Just open your PowerShell and run as an admin and type this script simple and see if you are able to access this okay people who are not understanding the concept of drive look at this 
these are nothing just drives c drive i can right click and i can change the letter how many drives do i have i have from a b c to till z but look at this okay i am planning to change the drive letter of my d drive by the way i am not going to see that network drive here these are all, all local drives okay and you don't even have to know this i'm just opening it for your understanding so if i right click and change the drive if i click look at this which is which drives are missing can you guys see which letters are missing or maybe there could be just one letter because there are only one right c. C. c yes why is it missing because i have already assigned it somewhere right so i cannot assign it and i can see n drive but i won't use it because i know that there is n drive on, on network share okay now if i go ahead here and check look at this i do have this file and now if i create some file here i should be able to see this on my azure portal if i go to my azure portal look at this can you guys see so this is how you access your file share here is the button connect button you get this screen select the drive show the script copy and paste it and that's all but make sure you turn off your firewall etc otherwise you will be stuck in your os level issues okay so only 30 seconds are left guys i've shared the screen try connecting it if you are if you are able to connect just upload a file with your name so i will understand who all are able to connect to this and okay. i'll see you guys in 5 minutes at uh, 14:45 will resume in 6 4 minutes we will resume meanwhile try connecting this and uh, upload your file here so i'll i'll come to know that you guys are able to access this see you guys in 4 minutes stopping the session now